First, I wanted to just kind of uh, let you know about what we've been doing and what we got coming up. Um, yesterday, we had a group of people that got together and over the past week or so, uh, donate food and items to buy and money to buy food. And a, a group of people got together yesterday and made some share baskets, which was uh, a total Thanksgiving meal in a box. Uh, we, we were literally meals on wheels yesterday. Uh, but we had a group of people just come and, and bring whole turkeys and, and boxes of macaroni and stuffing and, and all the other stuff that go to it. Even gave them cakes and things like that, and we and we delivered uh, about ten families uh, holiday food for the for the holidays, uh, a Thanksgiving or a Thanksgiving meal, a Christmas meal for the holidays. In case they didn't have it, or in case they, uh, well, we just wanted to bless them. We actually still have a few supplies left over and money. So if you know of someone that needs, or or you would just like to bless them. Uh, we still have a sign-up sheet out on the board that you can write your name and address and we will deliver it to them free of charge just to be a blessing. So I wanted to thank everyone that, that, uh, that gave, that, that, that participated, that delivered. Uh, I, I, I firmly appreciate it. And uh, several of them just told about the smiles on the faces, that they, they weren't really expecting it. Some of them were just uh, children that attend here that their parents don't, and we just wanted to bless their parents. Uh, so we just we just sent it to their house, and totally unexpecting it. And I just wanted to say thank you, because uh, I had very little to do with it. I honestly did it. I tried to stay out of it as much as possible, and I want to thank you all for that. Uh, uh, next week is actually Christmas, Christmas Day. Um, and in my family, our tradition was uh, that we stayed up super late on Christmas Eve opening our presents. You know, we literally had to go to bed and pretend we were asleep. And then we got to get back up uh, and, and open our presents. And then we were up almost all night. And uh, But what I wanted to do was we're going to have a, a brief service next Sunday for about an hour. Uh, it starts at 1030 and it will end at approximately 1130. Uh, and if you're unable to come, that's that's fine. But if you, if you are looking for a place to attend and worship on Christmas Day, the day about uh, Jesus Christ, uh, then we will be here, and we're just going to worship Him and honor Him and uh, and and get in worship and love Him, and, and and you can spend time with your family before and after. Uh, but we just wanted to make that available to you. Uh, after that, oh, man, we're, just, we're in the holiday season, right? So the, the, the following Sunday after that, guess what it is? Not the holiday, New Year's Day. Man, we're already hitting a new year. And what usually comes from New Year's are resolutions and and just renewal. Uh, and especially after the holidays, hopefully it's a time of uh, renewing yourself. Uh, so that's what we're going to be trying to do. In, in the first month of the year is that we're not going to really plan any events because Christmas is an, a busy time. Uh, but what we want you to do is be able to be refreshed that month. So what, what we're planning is we're going to have a, this is in by no means mandatory, this is just an, an opportunity, is for you to refresh yourself with fasting and praying. Well, you say, well, that doesn't sound like, that doesn't sound like renewal to me. That sounds like work. Uh, it's really not. It is work the first time that you do it for the first maybe day or two. Uh, I recently, and uh, this is not a, a, a boast or brag because it's actually been a while since I did, but I did one just a few weeks ago. I thought, if I'm going to ask my people to do it, then I better do it. So I did it already as a trial run, and I'm going to do it again. But it really renews your spirit. It might hurt your flesh a little bit at the beginning. Uh, but I promise you it is, a, it is a, a very renewing thing in your spirit. I promise you that. Uh, you can, you can uh, uh, I'll give you a guarantee. If, you do, if it doesn't work, then you can eat afterwards. I promise. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Yeah. All right, so uh, that was just kind of what we're going to be doing over the next couple weeks and what we did uh, this past week. So I couldn't talk about Christmas without Christmas. Stories. Amen. Christmas is all about the stories, right? We talk about presents. 
lot about the crust, it's a lot about the treats, and it, it's a lot about stories. As a matter of fact, we even refer to the birth of Jesus as the Christmas story. There are movies about the Christmas story. There are songs and carols about the Christmas story, right? A lot of them, however, are inaccurate, but we won't get into all that, you know. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. How many of you ever heard the song, I Saw Three Ships Come Sailing In? Anyone heard that? I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, and they had uh, Mary and the baby Jesus. I don't know why they needed three ships to carry Mary and Jesus. No, Joseph's not even there. I don't know where Joseph is. And then it also says that they came into Bethlehem. There is no water around Bethlehem. No, we, won't, we won't get into that. All right, there's, uh, I'm sure you can look all these up. There's many others. Uh, like one of them that says, uh, uh, silent night, right? No, no crying Jesus made. I don't know what kind of baby. I know it was perfect. But babies cry. That is the sign of life that they cry. Uh, and uh, so uh, I heard a story that uh, the, when, uh, when, when, when someone first had their first baby, right? And, and as fathers, we really don't know how to handle that situation, right? It's, it's just... We, it, it is new to us, just like it is to anyone but that first time. And I remember the doctor telling me, he said, there's, there's three reasons why your baby cries. And he says, one is they're hungry. If they're crying, it, it's, one of, it's one of three things. They're hungry. All right, all right. They're hungry. You feed them. Cry. Number two is they're tired. It's tired. They need a nap. They'll cry. And number three is they have a dirty diaper. And my first thought was immediately, the dirty diaper should really be number two. <laughs> you yeah, know, number, number two. <laughs> all right, so anyways. Um, all right, so let's get into the stories, all right? Um, how, many, how many watch Christmas movies? How many love Christmas movies? Right, like some of the top movies, uh, Christmas movies, I'll, I'll just mention a few. Uh, like the Christmas Carol, right, where we talk about Scrooge and the, and the ghost of the Christmas past and, and present and future. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Some of the classics. It's a Wonderful Life, right, which I've never seen. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street, still never seen that one. Uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. So I thought, here, I'm going to make a, my top ten list of Christmas music, which I figured you all were wondering. Right? So I'll give you a real quick. These are in no particular order. Number one, Santa Claus. Love Tim Allen when he gets all fat and he's drunk and jiggling. And, uh, uh, Home Alone. Home Alone. You can't go through Christmas without Home Alone. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which is a whole bundle of craziness. Uh, Polar Express. If you like the calm and the, and just the, the, the meaningful route, I like Polar Express. Uh, the Nativity, of course. The Nativity, which is the real movie of, of, of Jesus' birth. Uh, Elf. How many ever seen Elf? You just, you just can't go without quoting some Elf quotes. Um, Grinch. The Grinch is one of my favorites. I have a Grinch pajamas, Grinch pants, shirt. I have a hood, uh, yeah. It's bald in the Grinch. I like the Grinch. Uh, Christmas with the Cranks. How many ever seen that one? The Christmas Story, which I have never sat watched all the way through, I don't think, but it is a good one. I, I, the, I've seen parts and parts probably ten times over, but I never sat and watched it from the beginning. And, uh, and what's the last one? This is just my personal favorite, Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard is the ultimate Christmas movie. Can't go wrong with Die Hard. All right? So, but in all these movies, right? In all these movies, it's about the story. Right? It's about the story. It's, it is about um, just from the beginning of the end. Like if you take a couple of examples, like the change of people's character, right? And it's a Wonderful Life, and, and the Grinch. You know, the whole purpose of the Grinch is that his heart grows at the end, right? And that's just—it's all about the story. Uh, but and I got to thinking about it, and I, and I wonder, you know, this this story that Christmas is all about Jesus, and that should be our favorite. And I wonder what was God's what's God's favorite. 
and that be, and it belongs to every person. And it, or it can belong to every person. He looks at each and every one of us and he says, my favorite story would be taking someone who was lost and making them found. That's my favorite story. Right? And I want to I want to look at look at you in the eye. I want to look at you just for a moment and say this. And I promise you I will not take long. Uh, but I want to say this to you. That we often fear that God does not like to redeem us. We often think that we're throwing a burden on Him. Saying, God, I really got myself in a mess. How many ever been there? And we kind of, we, we, we dread that. We kind of fear turning to God and saying, God, I can't handle this. I really got myself in a mess. I'm full of sin and I just really need your help. And I, and I want to be honest with you and say, God wants that, that is his favorite story. And we often think, man, I really hate to give this burden to God. And God loves it. The Bible says he delights in showing mercy. So it isn't, we, we often think, well, I hate to just give this to God again. He wants to do it. It is a weird thing because we're taught God hates sin. And he does. He cannot tolerate it. He cannot be with it. But at the same time, he loves your sin because he wants to take it from you. He wants it. And he can't, he can't stand it, but yet he wants to take it from you. He delights in mercy. So, and I got to think about it, right? I, I, like, how many of you have ever, someone's ever done something wrong to you? And you hate forgiving them. Yeah, that is something that God doesn't do. God does not say, man, I hate you. I mean, we, we don't want to. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to let him go. I'm getting, he's getting off scot-free. God he looks at you and he says, I can't wait to forgive that person. I can't wait to give them a story of redemption. If they would just look at me and say, God, I can't handle this on my own. God would say, oh, I just wait for that moment. God is, and I'm not, he loves all people, but he is not looking for a clean person. So that he can clean them up. And as much as we don't like it, God looks for the filthy one. God loves the sinner. God loves the one that has the baggage that we don't want to deal with. God loves that story. That's his favorite story. He wants those who are lost. He wants those. He loves that those who are sick, have sin, have shame. Just filthy. He, because you know why? He, that's his favorite story. It's because he wants to change the story. <laughs> it happens over and over in the Bible. He takes Abram and turns him into Abraham. He takes Saul and turns him into Paul. He takes Simon into Peter. He turns Jacob into Israel. He loves to take Moses the murderer and turn him into Moses the deliverer. He loves to change the story. It's his favorite. Yeah, go ahead. That's the God we serve. I don't know about you. You probably have a story. And, and you once were lost, but now you're found. You once were dead, but now you are alive. We all, if, if we have found Christ, we are. That was his favorite story. That was the one, over one person's story changing, the heavens rejoice. Over one story changing. We feel like we burden God with that. Even after our story has been changed and we have faltered and we failed and, and we've messed up and we look at us, but I really hate to throw all this on you again. God, God's like, oh, I want to give me, I, I, I can handle everything you can throw me. I want you to give it to me. Let's look here. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, right? You see one of the, one of the, the gospels account of the story of the birth, and it talks about the wise men, right? Which, which we've seen uh, in, in the in the play here. There were three kings, which is again inaccurate. Right? The Bible never specifically says that. It doesn't say that there were three of them. There was three types of gifts, and it doesn't say they were kings. It says they were they were magi. They were they were like astrologists from uh, from the east or from from the Orient, Oriental people, right? So. It doesn't say they were kings, royalty doesn't say that. Uh, that doesn't mean they weren't. Right? Uh, maybe the guy that wrote the song had some intel that I don't have. But, but just historically, uh, that's all right. You don't have to change that your name scene. And also, they didn't come at birth. They didn't come at the baby. It was, they didn't come until a couple years later when Jesus was a young child. That's 
it's okay. You can keep your major scene the way you have it. Like your nativity, that you love to decorate, to keep it. I won't, let you, I won't make you take it down. Okay? Uh, but look here. In, in Matthew chapter 2, it's talking about it. It says, after Jesus was born of Bethlehem, that these wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. And it says, verse 2, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen him from the east and have come to worship him. So they are looking for him. Right? They're looking for him. And after some encounters with Herod and, and, and some delays, let's get to verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child of Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had looked at their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, we'll kind of know that. And then some of you may even know that there are, there's a little bit of a history. There's a little bit of symbolism of behind of the gifts. I'm sure... The wise men didn't even know why they were bringing those gifts. Uh, this is my personal opinion. But they were bringing gifts that really represented part of Christ. And, and, and in a lot of ways, it, it, it represented his past, present, and future. Right? They were bringing in gold because it represented a king. That he was king of kings and he left that to come to earth. And then... They gave him frankincense, which was an incense for a priestly role. He came to be our priest here on earth. He came to be our, 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 our savior, our Messiah. And then future, they gave him myrrh, which was what they would give to uh, dead people. Right. To, to, to uh, incense their bodies. Right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, in, in an embalming type of uh, product. And I'm sure that these guys, even though they were wise men, maybe they didn't know. I don't know. They're wiser than me. Uh, but maybe they didn't know. But maybe they didn't. But I just wanted to kind of look at the past, present, and future for a few moments. And I'm already about 67% done. Alright? So, uh, if you're a mathematician, you can try to figure out how long it's been and see how long we got. Uh, Alright, but like, much like the Christmas Carol, which the Christmas Carol deals with the past, present, and the future. I want to look at that this morning. Is that all right? Yeah. Hopefully it'll help you. Maybe not. If you don't, if you, don't um, you can't get your time back, but I promise it will help you eventually. Um, all right, so our, our past. Well, what is our past? Our past it deals with a sin problem. All of us. The Bible says that everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we all have a past with a sin problem. Alright? And the only way that that sin problem can be taken care of is with a gift. It's not something that you earn. It's not something that you can work toward. See, Jesus himself, as he received gifts, he decided he wanted to give gifts. Um, you can look these up. I promise you each one will say it is a gift. Alright? That you can't earn it. You get it because someone else pays the price and gives it to you. So we all, myself included, have a sin problem. That's our past. And God says, I want to help you with your sin problem of the past by giving you the gift of grace. Or what is the gift of grace? In Ephesians chapter 2, it says this, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the what? Gift of God. Can y'all see that with the star? Not of works, lest anyone should boast. So what does that mean? Is that you cannot get it by earning. You can't get it by working for it. Then you can say, oh, I was good enough. I earned it. I worked for it. You might be able to do that at your job. And you may be able to do that in your career and at home and, and things. But with Christ, he wanted to make everyone available. He said, so I'm going to just pay for it for you. And that will deal with your sin problem. Deal with your past. Right? Um, what is grace is that he will not treat us like we deserve to be treated. We all, we all have a sinful nature. And you, let me just play like this, this is what I think some of you may be thinking. The 
I said, well, that's real easy for you to say. You're the pastor, you're up on the stage, and you don't have a sin problem like I have a sin problem. Yes, I do. I have a sin problem that I fight every day. But I also have had a worse sin problem in my past that God totally erased. Not because I deserved it. It was by grace. Right? And you look at me, let me just be honest and tell you my story in about one minute. I was raised in church, and but I grew up to be a rebellious heathen, say it that way. I just wanted to sin in any way that I could. I didn't want to just, I didn't accidentally sin. I was sinning on purpose, you know what I mean? Like anything that I thought would upset God, <laughs> I wanted to do that. I never made up my mind to say, man, I really, I probably ought to get right with God. Never did that. Never wanted to do that. But I was totally lost and totally void of happiness. And one day, God met with me in this room, in that back pew that's really no longer there. He sat back there, and not by any of my effort, God moved on me and it. In my own words, it felt like Paul, when God said, why do you treat me this way? All you have is hate for me, yet all I still have is love for you. And I couldn't handle it. I surrendered. I have messed up numerous times. God <laughs> dealt with my sin problem because he wanted to change my story. And he changed my story that way. Let's look at number two. We all have a, a present problem, which usually relates in our stress. Our, this is a stress problem. This is how we deal with what's going on in the present. Some of you are right in the middle of Christmas stress right now. I mean, it's right there, right? You just, oh, I got this to do. I got this to do. This is what I felt like this morning. We got this to do. We got this to do. I got to get this done. And, and all this has to go well. And, and you just. How do you deal with stress? And God says, I have another gift for you and your problem, and it is called peace. It is the gift of peace. In John 14, 27, it says, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's for the kids. He says, I'll give you peace. Now, there's a, there's a little problem with peace is that we kind of look at some, we look at peace like peace, uh, worldly peace, like there is no fighting. There is no war. Uh, a lot of a lot of Indian words, when they thought, when they used the word peace, that's what they meant, absence of trouble. Right? That's not the word that, that God wants to use. That's not the, God, the word that God intended. He did not say you'll have peace without problems, he said you'll have peace or you'll have problems, you'll have stress, but you can give them to me and I will take care of them for you. You don't have to worry about them, you don't have to be afraid about them. Why would we be afraid if everything's going smooth? All right, so God says right now, uh, and can I be honest with you, I, I, I stand up here and say this, but I struggle with this just as much as anyone. There's so many times that I have to be reminded that God says, why do, you, why do you keep holding on to your stress when I said, if you'll give it to me, peace, I'll give you. If you give me your stress and your worry, I'll give you peace. That is a good deal. You shouldn't pass that up. Alright? Just for the second time, I'm going to move on a little quick, a little bit. Alright? Last one is we deal with our past, we deal with our future. Maybe that's maybe that's you. Maybe you maybe you've not dealt with your past and you need that. Or maybe you're dealing with your present right now with stress and you really just need peace. Whatever situation is going on, you need that. Maybe, you, maybe you're all good there, but maybe you have a security problem. Like, what is going to happen to my future? Like, what's happening to me? I'm all good now, but what may happen to me if, 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 if I'm not right with God, if things aren't great? God has another gift for you. Right? Uh, and that is... The gift of eternal life. A lot of times we deal with insecurity. We don't know what's going to happen. As a matter of fact, you can remember that uh, I remember this story of 
friend of mine, he told me, I, he said he went up, uh, to his girlfriend, and his girlfriend just broke up with him. He said, I couldn't handle it. And I said, why? Why did you break up with me? And she said, well, I just feel like you're really, really, really insecure. And he said, I thought, great, this is really going to help. Having my girlfriend break up with me is really going to boost my insecurity. Right? Kind of has the opposite effect. But we all have insecurity about what it may be. And God is concerned about your future. Right? Your future. Maybe not what happens tomorrow, or maybe not what happens for you, what, what you get for Christmas. But He's concerned with your eternal future. So he says, they can't handle this on themselves. They can't pay for this. They can't do this. So I will give them a gift. <coughs> Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It says in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just thought, how amazing is that from the beginning of time, God knew we mess up, we sin, we have stress, we have insecurities, and He said, I'll give them a gift. Something they can't handle on their own. If I could just uh, speak on and on to you and, and, and just speak to you from, from my heart is that a lot of us will be here dealing with this, thinking with this. Now I've been doing okay by myself, not, not asking for God's help, not using God's gifts. say to you this way, God already paid for it, provided it, and offered it to you. And, and, and the fact that you go on without it is a waste of what he has done. Amen. He thought you were so valuable that he said, I'll send my son to be able to give them these gifts. I'm going to ask you if you would just bow your head and close your eyes for one moment. Maybe you didn't come for this type of thing. Maybe you came just for the play. That's fine. Uh, but I want you to know. I don't want you to leave here without knowing. That God is not scared by your sin problem. God is not scared with your stress problem. And God is not uh, uh, worried by your security problems. He provided gifts. Already have an answer for those. Maybe you're here today and you have a sin problem. Right? Maybe you haven't dealt with your past yet. Maybe you said, I've done just way too much stuff. I got way too much uh, darkness, too much black on my ledger that God can't handle. God is anticipating, like how we do Christmas presents. He is just anticipating, waiting for the opportunity to, to clear your past. He will remove it. The Bible says he will wash it and erase it and forget it. He will forgive it and just choose to forget it. Maybe you're here and you have a stress problem. Maybe you've received salvation, but right now you're just stressed because you're not continuing to give God your worries and give Him your problems, give Him your stress. And handling it on your own. God says, I got a gift for that. Or maybe you're, here, you're just not sure about your future. You worry. You have no idea what may happen tomorrow. And we none of us do, but we have security in Christ that will never fade away. Let me tell you a real quick story. As, as you keep your eyes closed, this won't take but just one minute. In 1980, now, let me tell you how, how, how good God, how, how much he is worth living for. In 1980, a young man from R R Rwanda, that's a hard time saying that, Rwanda, was forced by his tribe 
to either renounce Christ or face certain death. He refused to renounce Christ, and so he was killed on the spot. I know that may not sound very encouraging, but it said the night before, he had written the following commitment, which he left in his room. He wrote it out, they found it, and the next day, this is what it said. He says, I'm part of the fellowship of the unashamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. And my future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living. Sight walking. Smooth knees. Colorless dreams. Tame vision. Worldly talking. Cheap giving and dwarfed goals. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I won't give up. Shut up. Let up. Until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up for the cause of Jesus Christ. I must go until he comes. I will give until I drop. Preach till everyone knows. Work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no trouble recognizing me because my banner will not be clear. This is what I want to ask you this morning is just to make a choice. This man made a choice. He said, my past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure, and it's all because of Christ. And I'm going to ask you, if you struggle with any one of three of those, I'm going to ask you just to slip your hand up, just to be included in the prayer. I'm not going to make you stand up, get up, come forward. I'm just going to ask you to say, if you're dealing with any one of the three, just slip your hand up so that we can pray for you, and then we'll be dismissed. Is there anyone here this morning? Thank you very much. Jesus, see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God is looking, but he wants to help change your story. He wants to change your story. He wants to help make your, maybe your, the first half of your book, the chapters are a mess, but God wants to take those chapters and turn them into something beautiful. For those of you that raise your hand, we're going to pray for you and just ask God to do the work in you. And I'm just going to ask you to just turn your heart to God and say, God, you just, you, 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 change, you change my life. You change my story. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray over those two hands that came up right now. And if anyone raised that I missed or they wanted to raise that just didn't, I pray, God, that you will touch their heart. I pray, God, that you will move on them. I pray, that, Lord, that they will confess you and say, God, I really need you to step in and change my story. You have offered me grace. You've offered me peace. You've offered me eternal life. And God, I accept. I accept that gift of salvation. I accept the gift of making me new, changing my life, giving me peace, giving me a secure future. And I pray all those things only in the name of Jesus. The gift of God that you have granted to us. Give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you, Jesus. Bible said, Amen. 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 Would you give God praise for those that raised their hands? God, we thank you. We thank you so much, Father. God, we just ask right now that you seal this word. Seal not so much even the words that I said, but Lord, the heart, the, the, the seed down in our heart. God, that it, will, that it will grow, that faith will grow, that faith will arise. That we will choose, we'll make a choice, God, I will serve you. Follow you. I accept the gifts you have given me. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. We love you. I really, I want you to know because of Christ. Now, I'm not like him near as much as I want to be, but I want you to know that we love you. Right? Not because you're
great. Even though you may be great, maybe you're not great. But we love you because God has loved us with an everlasting love when we weren't great. The Bible says that he died for us while we were still sinners. So we want you to know we love you. And because we love you, we have a little treat for you. And we love the treats, right? And we, we want to have a, we have a little treat for you as you go this morning. We hope you enjoy yourself. We really hope that you have an encounter with God more than anything. But as you go, we will be handed a bag. Put some treats in it, some goodies in it that you can just enjoy. And if you don't like any of the sweets, I will take them off your hands. <laughs> I just want to help you out is all I want to do. All right, so uh, we love you. We really appreciate you. If you made a decision to follow Christ or rededicate your life to Christ, or anything like that, please tell someone. Right? Tell someone, man, God is changing my story. Right? In, in Jesus' name. So, uh, we love you. We really pray and hope that you have a Merry Christmas.